I'd like to welcome everyone to the summer camp planning uh, workshop that's put on by Kids Ability and the City of Cambridge. Uh, we'll be starting with some general uh, planning for summer camp planning and then going into specifically uh, for the City of Cambridge. Um, so we'll start the uh, general presentation. Okay, so uh, the purpose tonight is summer camp planning, finding the right camp for your child. Uh, basically, we consider there's about uh, six steps when you're looking at planning summer camps for your child. One is your needs. So what are your needs? Number of weeks that you need, uh, drop-off logistics, time of the camp, uh, what is your budget for summer camps? Um, and then you're also considering what are the goals for your child? So are you looking for camps that are fun? Do you want social interaction? Do you want to build on your skills? Because we're dealing with children with special needs, uh, we need to, you need to really look at what are your child support needs. Then you want to research your camps. And it's really important to select a camp that's a good fit for your child. Um, and once you have those camps selected, um, we need to look at funding. Uh, do you qualify for funding? Can we look at disability specific funding? Uh, once that's in place, you want to register for the camp and provide the camp with as much information uh, as they need to support your child. So we're just kind of going, I'm going to go in that order. Um, so one of the big things that parents ask me about is support options. So if your child requires extra support to attend summer camp, many camps do offer a one-to-one, -one, a two-to-one, or a three-to-one support. Um, some camps are low, what we call lower camper to staff ratios. They do not have a one-to-one or -one, a two-to-one or a three-to-one support, but they have a higher uh, number of staff to camp. Um, you can also look at using your special services at home, your SSAH doubling uh, to hire a worker, um, or you can fund it on your own and uh, so send your own one to one worker. So if you are using a camps inclusion staff, one of the key things, and this we found um, as we've been talking to all our camps has changed, is changing this year. So you need to find out what support needs that the camp's inclusion staff will provide. If your child needs toileting, is the inclusion staff doing that? If they need feeding support, uh, if they're a runner, uh, if they have behavior, what kind of support, what is the camp able to provide with their inclusion staff? If possible, um, you'd like to, to request a visit with the inclusion staff prior to camp so that your camper can meet them, or at least you want to get a name or a photo so you can help prepare your camper with who they're going to be working with. It's really important that you, you prepare your child as much as possible, uh, letting them know that they're going to be spending the week with someone new. The other piece as much as, as providing that uh, information to your child, you really need to provide the camps inclusion staff enough information to have to help them give your child a, a successful time at camp. Now, if you are looking at supplying your own one-to-one -one support worker, the first thing you need to do if this is something you're looking at is connect with the stamp camp that you're thinking about sending your child to. Um, to see if you're if it works with COVID, there's a lot of cohorting, there's a lot of ratios. Um, so I wouldn't want you to sign the camp up and then the week before say, oh yeah, I'm sending my child with their own worker. So really, before you register, you need to connect with the camp um, about sending your own. You also need to connect with the camp to see if there are any requirements about who can be your child support worker. Some camps have an age requirement. Some camps have an education requirement. Um, so it's just a question that you have to ask. Obviously, you need to start your search early. Um, and you ideally want to find a one-to-one -one worker that 
your child's familiar with. So whether it's your special service or a home worker, an educa EA is an educational assistant or a babysitter. Uh, and then the other key part is to provide as much information as possible to the support worker about your child and about the camp so they know what to be prepared. So if they have difficulty running and you send them to a sports camp, that may not be the best fit. Um, so you want to uh, be able to provide them both the information about your child and about the camp. So a couple of things in Cambridge. Uh, we're very lucky in Cambridge uh, that we have four different camps that have formal inclusion support programs. Um, the city of Cambridge, which includes the Center for the Arts, the YMCA, the YWCA. Uh, so the YMCA will do some one-on-ones. Um, some of the neighborhood associations also have one-on-one. Um, and the YWA, CA has inclusion support, but it's not one-to-one -one support, okay? Um, okay, so that's what I was gonna talk about, about support. The next thing you need to do after you think, okay, yeah, these are my needs, these are my child's, uh, my goals for my child. Yes, they need support. Okay, let's look into camps. So some of the things you need to decide is if you want a day camp or an overnight camp. Um, you need to decide if you want an inclusive or a specialized camp. So inclusive would be your child integrating or be included with um, peers. A specialized is a camp such as Sunblast um, that's run by the city of Cambridge that is designed for children with disabilities. Um, and then uh, siblings can be invited to attend. Um, the other thing you need to look at, so after you've decided if you want day or overnight or inclusive or specialized, you need to look at what kind of support the camp, or the camp offers. So um, do they have inclusion support? Um, what are they able to support with? So is it personal care, is it behavior, safety, social integration? So what is that level of support that the camp you want um, to send your child to have? You need to again ask them, can you provide your own worker? Uh, one of the things that when I'm working with families, we look at the camp environment. Uh, so we look at, is it a camp that's a large camp? And so if your child has a lot of sensory needs or gets overwhelmed, maybe a large camp isn't the best. So you want to do a camp that has smaller groups. Uh, an indoor versus outdoor, a very structured, or a very flexible and supervised camp. So kind of want to look at what camps are and what your child needs. Um, will the camp activities be motivating for your child? If your child hates skating, please don't send them to a skating camp. Um, so you want them to do activities that they're interested in. And then if your child has a physical disability, you want to look at the accessibility of the camp. So um, the grounds and the facility. So big question we always get is where do I find information? So one of the things um, that we've done at Kids Ability is we now in our programs and services on our website have the camp directory. And I am gonna click on this, if it doesn't work, I'll pop right to our website. Uh, Danielle, can you tell me if that um, popped up, the camp directory? No, it has not. Okay, so sometimes when you, yeah, I'm going to stop the you... share and then I will um, go to a new share. So I think this is important. And I'm actually going to go to our home site. Okay, can you see the uh, catch the ace part of get, uh, our website? Okay, so um, yes, our, nav our, our website's a bit hard to navigate. Um, so what you want to do is you go to services and you want to go programs and services. All the camp information is under the C. So we have what's called the camp directory here. And so under our summer camp directory, you are going to find overnight camps, day camps, and camps for teens and uh, young adults. So under the day camps, 
Um, we have tried in water, all Waterloo Region uh, and Guelph Wellington to list uh, the camps that have uh, some form of inclusive support or that are um, open to having you supply your own workers. Um, so we, a little bit of a description, an email, uh, the website, um, if we know it when registration opens. And so this is a long list. What we've tried to do is put the city it's in right beside um, the camps. So you will see there's a huge list of camps. So here would be city of Cambridge. Um, and we are continually working to update this. So this is a resource for you as parents. The other resource that we have um, here on our website, so I'm gonna go to services, programs and services again, the C, and that is camp information. So a copy of this workshop will be, when it's finished, uh, uploaded right here on our website, uh, as well as the camp fair. So we, last night we had the overnight camp, uh, coming in January 24th, we have the day camp. So the video will be uploaded on here if you're not able to attend and you can hear from the camps themselves um, what they're doing, as well as a link um, to the handout that I did email out um, that is uh, the step-by-step -step information that includes the funding and all of those things. I'm just gonna stop this share and I'm going to bring it back to um, the PowerPoint. So this is what I talked about, the camp directory and the capability website, as well as the camp information. City of Cambridge has a fantastic uh, website just for camps. So that link is here. It's also in the handout I put, whoops, provided. Same with neighborhood associations, the YMCA, the YWCA, uh, as well as chatting with other parents. Um, what I want to do is just do a little bit of a stock share again and bring up my summer camp planning handout. So this should have been emailed to you. And I'm just going to go to, uh, in this handout, I will be talking about funding later, but it does have the links, the direct links to those spots on our website, um, as well as, and again, this is constantly, we'll be updated on our website. So we have tried to give you a date of when camps registration open. So this handout is specifically for Cambridge. There's one for Kitchener Waterloo and there is one for Guelph. Um, so we have tried to list uh, when registration and you see um, for day camps, January 24th is the earliest and then um, it goes right down. So um, that's in here in that handout. And at the end, if you did not get the handout email, um, I will get your email address and um, give that to you. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, okay, so we talked about where to get the information. So the other thing that you saw in the handout is we do have the virtual camp fair. Um, so we did the overnight camp one last night. And again, a video will be on that website. We have the day camps. This will be all of Waterloo region. So not just Cambridge. So if you work in Kitchener or you and live in Cambridge um, or you're open to attending camps in other areas, um, that, that camp fair will be the 24th. And then if your child's older and you're looking for teen or young adult camps, that one is on February the 28th. You register on the feasibility website on the calendar. And again, all recordings are put on our website. So now I just want to talk, talk generally about funding, because that is another consideration as parents that you have to look at. There are what we call disability specific funding. So if your child has autism, the autism direct funding is done through Sunbeam Developmental Resource Center with a deadline of January 31st to apply. Autism Ontario has funding, um, which is done by a lottery. The LEAF funding is if your child has cerebral palsy, and there's one uh, funding for muscular dystrophy, 
This one for Down syndrome is a new one that we learned about this year. So it's for Waterloo Region and Wellington. Um, and it does funding for expenses up and beyond the cost of camp. So if you need to hire someone to be a worker, it will do that. If the camp costs more um, because it's specialized, you can apply for funding for that. Um, you can use your special services at home funding or your Ontario Childhood Budget, your OAP. There are also a, uh, a number of income-based funding options. Um, and the, some of these are payment specific. So obviously the activities for less is anything, uh, is the city of Cambridge funding for residents of Cambridge to attend city run camp. So really critical, you have to live in Cambridge for this one and it has to be a city run camp. Uh, Jumpstart funding, the camp has to have an active component, I believe it's 50%. Um, uh, uh, be active. The fee assist is the YMCA. The Y is now called the YMCA of Three Rivers. So it's Wealth, Cambridge, Kitchen, Waterloo, and Stratford. The House of Friendship has a summer camp sponsorship program. Um, they're, they're very closely tied to the Neighborhood Association, but you can work with their family outreach program uh, to help fund other camps as well. And the Waterloo Region Child Care Subsidy Program. Um, that is not on your handout um, because it's always there, but it's um, it will be added to the handout. So Danielle and I just talked about that one tonight. So she'll talk a little bit more about that. So after you find the funding, this is critical for everybody to share your information. So every child's unique, but we really encourage you to openly share information about your child. We want to set them up for success. So one of the forms we recommend is you do an all about me. The city of Cambridge has their own version of this. It's actually very similar. Um, and, but basically um, there's a few categories and you include strategies. I have emailed you uh, kids abilities copy uh, with some examples and those are fictitious examples. Um, but basically you want to create a form that at a glance, um, your camp leaders and your camp inclusion support know what to do or, or how to work with your child. Um, and so these are the um, categories and here's one filled out. So uh, you can look at all of those kind of things. I, I know at Kids Ability, the teachers have helped for kids that are entering the camp system for the first time. Um, you can work with, it. you can run it by your OT or myself if you need help to create that. Um, so you've done all of those things. So you got what you know, you know, sorry, you know what you need. You know what your child's interested in. You look at what support they need. You pick your camps. You give it. You register and give them information. Now you need to work on preparing your child. So obviously this doesn't happen in January or February. This will be more in June, um, as your before your child goes to camp. So number one, you want to talk to your child before you camp. You need to prepare them. If you can share videos or photos from the camp's website. Uh, I know Danielle has often shared pictures if you need it, if it's not on the website uh, or different social media things, just to give your kids a picture of where they're going to go to. Consider visiting the camp prior um, just to give them a physical place to see. Again, it may have to be done before camp start because there are a lot of COVID restrictions um, that don't allow people coming and visiting. You can request a week, weekly schedule in advance to help prepare your child. You can write a social story about going to your camp. Um, I want to share one little story. So this is my, my co-worker's child, um, and she has a four-year-old that had a vision. So he went with mom to drop his sister off at horse camp. And he went and he was really shocked. He expected to see a campfire in the middle and all the little tents around, just like in the storybook about Curious George going camping. He had no concept of what horse camp was like. So think about 
preparing your child so they know what to expect. Again, stay positive and optimistic. Um, camp, summer camp's a lot of fun and lots of new adventures. So in the conclusion of the general stuff, I just want to say a child will thrive in an environment that's best suited to them. The more interesting the camp is or meaningful or connected, the fewer challenges we'll have. And again, I, I sound a bit like a broken record on this, but please be as open as you can with the camp when they ask for information about your child. The right camp will welcome everything about your child and the more information the camp has, the better prepared they can be and the better the weeks will be for your child. The last part is in the handout that I gave you that if you need more help, um, you're really struggling, you're overwhelmed, you need help to apply for funding, um, you're not really sure how much support your child needs, you can always call me or email me and book a consult. We call the summer camp plan a consult um, and that is available uh, for anybody that needs that support. And that information is in the handout. So I am going to stop my share and I am going to actually turn the presentation. So that was the general part. And I'm actually going to turn the presentation over to Danielle now to do specifically about the city of Cambridge. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, for those that I have not uh, met yet, I am Danielle Ciccarelli, uh, Recreation Coordinator. Uh, child and youth for the city of Cambridge. Uh, I oversee all of the children's programs, um, our inclusion portfolio, as well as our camp operations. Um, so welcome to those new faces and welcome back to our families who I think I've caught a couple of uh, reoccurring names uh, over Cheryl's slide. So, so welcome. Um, tonight, we're just going to go over uh, a general overview of what we have to offer uh, this summer. We will be operating. Um, we've been directed to program uh, accordingly to our 2021 uh, day camp regulations. We did get have a updated revised regulations come through December 22nd. Um, so nothing crazy has changed from this year. So we're just taking that information and moving it along for this year. Um, um, so I, a little bit about me, uh, for those of you that don't know, this is my fifth, uh, going into my fifth summer with the city of Cambridge. Um, very exciting. Uh, I've been, been able to meet a lot of, uh, families and, uh, kiddos of all ages, of all exceptionalities, uh, and have seen a fair share of, uh, recruitment through the, through the way as well. Uh, I am a behavior management uh, trainer, and I do train our staff in behavior management, uh, part of our training curriculum, as well as I'm a Parks Recreation Ontario uh, High Five Quality Assurance Program uh, trainer. So we do a lot of our uh, Q2 quality assurance, uh, sorry, um, formats and uh, evaluations through summer camp, uh, just to ensure that we are uh, adhering to um, the best quality standard we could provide. So uh, what does the city of Cambridge offer? Uh, we actually offer a three tier system of service. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one and one-on-two -on -two support available at all of our city run camps, um, which is our integrated camps. So as Cheryl mentioned, these are our camps um, that are run with uh, an integrated format. And then we have two specialized sites. We have a Sunblast site and an Imagination Station site. So for any families that have been past participants of those two, they've generally run, operated out of the Grandview Public School. Unfortunately, the school board has not allowed uh, third-party rentals to come in the, these last couple of years. Um, therefore, we've run, operated this uh, program out of the W.G. Johnson Center. Uh, we are hopeful that we'll be able to go back to Grandview this summer. However, nothing has been confirmed at this point. Um, if unfortunately we aren't able to, we will look at heading, having this back over at the Ted Wake Center in the W.G. Johnson Center. Um, Sunblast, um, our Sunblast campers, our children, 
uh, with physical and developmental exceptionalities, um, which also include their siblings and friends. So it can be, for lack of better words, a one-stop shop where families can drop off all siblings um, together um, at this camp. Uh, we do encourage friends to come along too, just to make it uh, a better environment for everybody. Uh, our, our Imagination Station Camp is our children with significant impulsivity, anxiety, um, difficulty transitioning, and they're easily frustrated. Um, so these specialized camps can be combined. Uh, we do do a lot of um, interactive, uh, quiet, and passive activities in these camps. Uh, the one thing that uh, we love and our, our participants really love um, is our relationship with music therapy. So we do have um, music therapy come in uh, once to two times a week and to offer a one hour um, music session with our participants, uh, which is actually all done virtually. Uh, they, they, they provide all the equipment for us at the beginning of the summer. Uh, we keep it, we sanitize it and clean it um, daily, and then it's there for our participants to access. So again, fingers crossed that we can go back to Grandview this summer. Um, Grandview is great uh, for any, anybody that doesn't know, Grandview is in the Preston neighborhood. Um, it's, uh, it's air conditioned. We have full access to the gym, uh, washrooms, accessible um, classrooms, as well as a park and green space uh, there too. Um, this is, uh, oh, sorry. My uh, screen cut off a little bit. Um, this is our registration date. Our registration is Tuesday, February 1st at 8 a.m. We are offering uh, 10 weeks of summer this summer, uh, beginning June 28th to September 2nd. Now that June 28th is a little bit tricky. Um, as of right now, the way I understand it, uh, Monday, June 27th is the last day of school for our public elementary kiddos. Uh, Tuesday, June 28th is the last day of school for our Catholic elementary kiddos. Um, so just wanting to provide an opportunity for any families who attend the public system to not be without care. So we are going to operate at that three-day camp. It's going to be a very modified camp that week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, Friday is Canada Day, so there will be no program on that. Uh, and then we'll have our full operation back up and running on um, Monday, July 4th, up into uh, Friday, September 2nd. Uh, so registration for one-on-one -on -one support can be done online uh, through Coral uh, or in person at Cambridge City Hall, the W.G. Johnson Center, or the John Dolson Center. Uh, unfortunately, our facilities are closed currently. Um, so the only way to register at this time, if we continue on this uh, lockdown, will be online at www.cambridge.ca backslash register. There's a, a full link uh, later in the presentation for you to jot down. Um, during the registration process, um, you will, sorry, you'll, need, you'll be prompted to ask if you require support uh, and if you've contacted myself. So what this is, is when you register, you're, there's a, 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 a question that's gonna come up that says, does your child require support? Yes or no? If you select no, it will take you right to the bottom and then you'll be able to check out. If you say yes, that's when the further questions are gonna come up. So the, the next question is gonna say, have you contacted Danielle Ciccarelli? You are going to say yes for this, because this is just to prompt you to send me a quick email saying, hey, Danielle, I registered Joe for XXX week at the WG Johnson Center, I'm just wanting to connect. Because what this does is, although I'm in the system in the database every single day checking, um, because I don't want to miss anybody, um, it just puts a little flag in saying, oh, perfect, and then I can assign um, an inclusion facilitator to your child. Um, Given the, the current COVID provincial guidelines um, and restrictions, we'll only be operating one-on-one -on -one support. So I, in the, my last slide, I said we do offer one-on-two um, just because we want to ensure um, the safety of all campers. We are going to continue with the model of one-on-one -on -one only. So there will be no one-on-two this year uh, for integrated campers. Uh, for some last and imagination station camp families, this is generally a one to three ratio. So what, what that looks like is 
we have been approved by council for 20 inclusion facilitators. So that's 20 staff every week who are with um, our kiddos with ex exceptionalities. Um, I too sound like a very broken record for those of you that have heard my speech before. It is so critical that you register early um, because our camps fill very, very quickly. Um, very fortunate, but very quickly. Uh, just, just for number purposes last year, registration opened up March 1st. I was completely full with over 160 requests for support um, by the end of March last year. Um, and on top of that, uh, we were 90% full across the board uh, for all camp spaces by within the first month. Um, so parents are thinking about summer camp early. Um, they want to ensure that their children have somewhere safe uh, and fun to go to. Um, and the, the earlier you register, the more opportunities you have as well in terms of choosing the camp that is best for your child, um, as well as financial uh, piece too, which we'll go through in the next slide. Um, so if you haven't created a login, uh, I highly advise you to create a login before February 1st. So it's uh, easy to bring up on your computer. Um, so you can create a login through www.cambridge.ca backslash register. Um, birthdays are imperative because you won't be able to register for a camp program without the proper birthday of, your, of the child you're looking to register. Uh, and then if you do already have a login, probably good to check in on Monday, January 4th, um, anytime after then, uh, because everything's going to be viewable by then. So I'm working on the back end to update the camps page uh, and the registration portal. Uh, so my target date is to have everything up and in test mode uh, next Friday. So that way it will go live the Jan January 24th so you can see what we have to offer. Um, another uh, really big tidbit uh, for you, as, as Cheryl mentioned, is our camps webpage. So that is the uh, www.cambridge.ca backslash camps. Um, this is my guru. This is where I put as much information uh, as possible and try to make it as user friendly as possible using accordions and um, organization. Uh, so that we, you can exactly see what uh, what sites we're offering, what uh, different specialty programs we're offering, uh, and the weeks that we're offering them. Um, when you check out, um, if you are looking to uh, provide payment through the camp payment plan or uh, a lump sum, this will ask you at this point. So do you want to pay by camp payment plan or do you want to provide payment in full? So. For those of you that uh, may be new to this evening, are we offer a camp payment plan um, for families who uh, would like to uh, need to make payment themselves rather than through a third party. This can be done by credit card and it is all dependent on when you register. So the benefit of registering early is that you get six months. So it's equal payments will be deducted from your credit card on the first of each month starting March 1st. So Hayden Yell, I'm registering February 1st for all 10 weeks times seven kids. That's a very big bill. Your first payment isn't going to be until March 1st. So even though you're registering February 1st, we're actually not taking any um, upfront fees until March 1st. So then your payments are gonna be from March 1st to August 1st. Um, if you register from March 1st to March 31st, your first payment's gonna be April 1st. So then it'll be five months. If you register in April, then it's going to be four months, um, up to a maximum of two months uh, is what we do for dividing the payments out. So it's really beneficial to register early to take advantage of that six month payment plan. Uh, we do ask that all credit cards are valid up until September 1st, um, just to help with um, navigating the system and, and um, the uh, legwork on the back end when payments are declined because of expired cards. Um, the second payment option is our own financial assistance program, which Cheryl touched base on. This is our activities for last program. Uh, so upon approval of this program, uh, each person in your household is eligible up to $300 for the year. Uh, and this actually can be put towards any program. It doesn't have to necessarily be a camp program. 
It could be aquatics, it could be skating, um, it could be a, a dry land program. The only thing that isn't accepted is memberships. Uh, this, th these funds can't be placed towards any memberships. Um, some other options, as uh, Cheryl mentioned, are the Jumpstart, the Extended Family, as well as House of Friendship. Uh, super exciting to announce that we signed an agreement this year with the Waterloo Region Child Care Subsidy Program. Um, so th this program is, um, you actually apply directly through the region themselves at www.regionofwaterloo.ca. Um, you select the Living Here tab, and then you will be prompted to select the Child Care and Early Learning. This will give you kind of a step to the application. Um, and kind of give you an outline of what documentation you need to provide as well. Once you've submitted all the documentation uh, to the Waterloo Region, uh, you'll be assigned a caseworker. And once they have approved your application, they will then directly connect with me um, and let me know that um, Joe has been approved for this many weeks of camps. There's a parent contribution and then there's a Waterloo Region contribution. So that contribution is based on income. So sometimes what happens this past summer, we did it as a trial. Um, a, parent, uh, a parent contribution was $2.25 for the day. For the day. Um, and so then the Waterloo Region covered the, the, remain, the remaining of it. So then I would go in, I would connect with you, find out which weeks you're looking for, and then apply those payments right to Waterloo Region and then apply that parent contribution to yourself. Um, if it's a larger contribution and you are looking for several weeks of camps, I can certainly discuss um, setting you up with a camp payment plan for that. So that way you're not um, having to um, provide um, lump sum payment at that time. Okay, so we actually, so we have six locations this summer. Um, really, really excited to bring back Dixon Arena for anybody that has been there. Um, so our John Dolson Center is our first one and that is over in Galt off of South Street. Uh, we've got four age groups there. So we've got our kinder camp, um, our tykes, our juniors and our seniors. Um, we have green space as well as blacktop space here. Uh, and really nice because we have access to an indoor pool, uh, which we use for camp only swims. Anybody, uh, any child who is the age of six and above will swim uh, three times per week. Um, unfortunately, we don't have our four and five year olds uh, swim with us only because of ratio, uh, city of Cambridge swimming guideline ratios. We simply just don't have enough staff to be able to um, put those proper ratios in effect, even if it is one on one, um, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, so we only have our six to 12 year olds swim during our camp swims. Uh, Dixon, Arena, Dixon Arena is down more in the downtown core. Uh, we've got our kinder camp there, our tykes and our juniors and seniors combined. This is a beautiful park. Uh, lots of green space, baseball diamonds. Uh, we've got access to the arena floor there, uh, as well as the change rooms. Uh, this arena is only open to us from the out from our during our hours of operation. Um, so staff are well versed with the safety um, protocols there, uh, as well as the usage of the fields. I've highlighted Pack and Go here. Uh, so our Pack and Go program was introduced in 2019. It's for children ages eight to 12. Um, and this program is uh, a traveling program. So student, uh, sorry, students, campers come to us, um, they get signed in and, uh, and then they board a bus and they go somewhere different every single day. It is an amazing camp. We, it was very, very successful in 2019. Um, however, because, because it's a traveling camp, um, we had to uh, put a stop on it due to COVID parameters and regulations. We started to modify this camp last summer in a way where we offered it um, occasionally. However, it was reduced to a two week, uh, sorry, two week, two day a week uh, trip. Um, and it was the only outdoor venues. Um, so we went to Emerald Lake, uh, we went to Valance Conservation Area, um, and then the third one, oh, Shades Mills. 
so really trying to push that outdoor uh, program piece to it um, and not having to go to the more populated uh, venues. Number three is our Haskler Arena. Uh, it's, our, it's a very busy site. All of our sites are busy sites, but this site is unique because it offers a lot of our specialty programs. So if the one thing that I say to many of our families is, I really encourage you not to put your child into a 10 week operation, all the same camps, because it becomes redundant and it becomes tiring. And that's when we start to see a little bit more behaviors happening too, because they've really evaluated um, and observed our staff uh, and they know what they can do and what but buttons they can kind of push uh, along the way. And sometimes they get tired of it too. Um, so Haskell Arena is kind of a great option to throw um, the odd, unique uh, specialty camp in there. Um, new this year, we have eSports coming on board. So eSports is our uh, video game camp where we have eSport coaches come in and they um, not play video games all day. They talk about nutrition. They talk about coding. Um, they do some outside time as well, but they get to the, the, the tips and the tricks uh, of that video game that they're focusing on for the week. We did run a pilot project on this um, this past fall throughout PADA camp, uh, and it was Minecraft. Uh, it was a, um, an amazing camp. It was very well received. Uh, it, was, it was a full camp. Um, and it's nice because we have a dedicated space in Hustler Arena that we were able to put additional Wi-Fi uh, to it, as well as set it up where it's more of like a, a video game camp with a great big screen TV and multiple controllers. Uh, robotics and coding is also new this summer. This is through our STEMotics robotics uh, team in Cambridge, uh, who's going to be coming on board and doing uh, different uh, robotics programs for us over at Hessler. Uh, summer sport and archery camp is another one. Summer sport and skating camp. Summer sport and swim camp. This is a great one. This is one that they actually go swimming every day um and it's it's uh there's two routes here so one is a learn to swim route uh and the other one is a ranger rookie star that age nine to twelve uh route um summer sport and golf camp is a traveling camp these uh these kiddos will travel to the cambridge golf club uh where they will receive three hours of golf instruction uh, on site. You don't need to have your own equipment. Um, they do have equipment there that uh, they can supply your child. And then we have our Focus on Nature Photography Camp, which is uh, through the Focus on Nature Photography team uh, in the Waterloo region. They do offer camps in the city of Waterloo as well. Uh, and they um, provide campers with cameras, uh, laptops, and USBs. And each day is a topic uh, where they um, guide campers through the camera logistics, how to use the camera, how to upload, how to filter, how to edit, uh, and then they create a collage for the end of the week. Uh, WG Johnson Center is our fourth option. Uh, that too is in the Hessler area, uh, and we offer a kinder camp um, up inside the WG Johnson Center, and then we offer also offer our Tigs to Seniors group in the Scout House. In past years, we have um, segregated these uh, age groups out so it's the tykes juniors and seniors however because of uh, covid parameters and uh, cohorting we have to put these this one together in the scout house because there can't be more than 10 um, campers in that scout house at one time uh, our fifth location um, as mentioned is the cambridge center for the arts uh, so this is in the downtown area right across from the city hall um, great location, uh, lots of different um, culture programs offered here. Uh, there's musical theater, filmmaking, uh, drawing, young artists, dance theater, uh, as well as animation and game design. And then of course, our last one as mentioned is, uh, is Grandview Public School, which is pending uh, our contract with the uh, Community Use of School Boards. So, documentation once you registered um, and I've connected with you to say yes we are so excited to have Joe uh, come to us this summer I've been able to assign him an inclusion facilitator for the 
weeks registered, you're going to also get an email from me uh, requesting for you to complete the participant information form, which is also known as our PIF and our All About Me form. So these two documents is, is exactly for us, for you to help me set your child up for success. Um, anything you can share on these forms uh, will be helpful when I debrief um, the information with the assigned inclusion facilitator. Some other forms that you may um, see uh, if they're applicable is our medication administration and consent form. So yes, we do offer medication and administration. Um, it will be a, a staff member over the age of 18 that administers this uh, with your consent. Uh, and a logbook will also be recorded uh, and shared with you each and every day. Um, so you can, we can confirm with you that your child did receive their medication at the um, time um, stated. Our non-parent pickup form, um, this is if um, aunt, uncle, friend, neighbor uh, needs to pick up your child for any reason. Uh, we just ask that you sign off on this form um, so that way we can ensure that our safe dismissal procedures are adhered to. Um, because of COVID, we do have a hand sanitizer form. Um, this is just completed once at the beginning of the first day of, of camp. Uh, and this is just to acknowledge that we are able to um, provide your child with hand sanitizer um, that is 75% or more um, uh, with alcohol. If your child has a sensitivity or an allergy to hand sanitizer, it's not a problem. Um, you would just let the camp leader or the supervisor know on site. Uh, and then what we do is we ensure um, we take that child with another staff member to the washroom um, as often as, other as often as other children are using hand, hand sanitizer to wash their hands. Um, we do have an allergy notice in, uh, notice in form, and that is a newer form that was revised last year um, that is a picture of your child um, that we place on this form, and then you can tell us about their allergy uh, symptoms, treatments, et cetera. Uh, and that is so that way, um, this is in the staff room, this is confidential. Um, however, this so everybody can see uh, what your child looks like if they have an, uh, an allergy, especially if we have um, break staff that are rotating in to cover uh, camp staff uh, while, they, while they take their break. Um, the mask exemption form is also a new one uh, last year, um, understanding that some children um, simply just cannot wear a mask. Uh, for um, whichever reason, uh, but we do offer this form and that can just be requested through myself and I can send that to you as well. So here is the link to my, um, my page uh, with the city of Cambridge. So once again, it's www.cambridge.ca backslash camps. There's a lot of information on here. Um, please don't go to this one tonight. It's not updated for summer. Um, as mentioned, it will be updated and live for viewing uh, Monday, January 24th. So grab a cup of coffee, grab a glass of wine, grab a tea, whatever your drink of choice is, and uh, give yourself a good 15, 20 minutes to peruse through this website. Um, so I've just included my information here. Um, so my email is over on the left in the computer. Uh, Cicerelli D at cambridge.ca, as well as my phone number is on the right. I would highly recommend you email me as um, emailing me is, is sometimes is, is a better response than phone calls, especially as we navigate uh, through COVID and working from home. Um, I check my email even off hours to make sure everything is tickety boo um, in the camp world. So I'm going to stop sharing at that point. And I am welcome to questions, Cheryl, or if you yeah, have something so, else to add um, before no, we do so, a QA. and a Yeah, so what, uh, what we're going to do now, I just want to give you a couple updates that were changes, uh, recent changes. Uh, and then I'm going to be stopping the recording. And we will allow you to put your videos, your um, record your video on, your mic on, and ask any questions you want uh, when it's not being recorded. So a couple uh, updates that have just come in. Um, the YMCA um, 
will still be offering one-to-one -one support, but they will not be offering personal care needs. So that is a change this year. Um, the other thing that is a change is that the uh, kids ability camps, so they were firefly camps or our fee for service camps will not be offered this summer uh, due to staffing issues. So I am now going to stop the recording and then again I welcome everyone to stay on and ask your questions. Let me uh, figure out how to stop.